and uh, my name is Hao Yang, and I'm right, right now I'm an assistant professor at New Frankfurt Master University, and uh, uh, I had a lot of work experience in these areas, especially I in Carlos Vehicles, uh, been with Yantac for two years for, as a postdoc, and uh, teaching at Lamar University in Texas for two years, and go to Toyota to do some research about their analytic uh, mobility services for two years, and now move to uh, Suspect Master, pretty nice place, and uh, it's a, it has very uh, great uh, research environment, so I've really enjoyed teaching, uh, teaching there and also doing some research in, uh, in this area. I think that the, the Great Toronto area is a pretty nice place to support the uh, new technologies. Uh, regarding to my presentation today, um, I'm talking about the uh, some applications of Canadian tunnels vehicles, and I believe most of you here has some research linked to the Canadian tunnels vehicles, especially if you're working in Chapelini recently. Um, so here is the contents of this uh, presentation. I'll give you some introduction about Canadian tunnels vehicles and their market analysis, and then go to my research topic about the integrated traffic management system. Uh, so, uh, Canadian tunnels vehicles, a lot of times we put them together, but they actually separate it. But eventually, they will also be combined together again. Uh, right now, the Canadian vehicles is kind of a more and more initiative to uh, enable the network wireless communication uh, in transport system. So, they will have several components. The vehicles definitely were trying to connect the vehicles and also the roadside infrastructures, the passengers, and another thing recently they raised is about the cloud and networks. So the vehicles and passengers and uh, also the uh, roadside infrastructure should all be linked to the uh, cloud or the network. Um, for the Canadian tunnels vehicles, uh, they actually have three different uh, uh, research areas for, about the, for the the way about the connectivity. Uh, the first one, the infotainment, which is about the uh, way the driver's passenger's interaction to the cars. So they will have the uh, audios, the Wi-Fi, integrated digital footprint, uh, and also the city and the entertainment to uh, build the connections between the cars and also the uh, passengers inside. And also you will have the telematics to build the connections between the cars and the, um, the cloud and network. And you know, we are also discussing a lot about the reflex technologies, V2I, V2V, uh, V2 uh, V2Home, V2P, and all those concepts to establish the communications among those entities in the uh, system. Uh, this is uh, actually one uh, analysis about the, uh, the revenue of the Canadian vehicle market. And we currently, uh, last year, 2018, the market is about uh, $75 billion. But we expect that the, the uh, revenue will increase dramatically. Uh, in 2025, it will increase to $240 billion. This is a very huge market for the development of Canadian tunnels Canadian vehicles. And we anticipated that by 2025, uh, almost uh, 68% of the uh, new cars will be equipped with some connectivity technologies. So we can anticipate that the penetration rate of the connected cars will be very high after 2025. So that's the connected vehicles. Uh, for autonomous vehicles, uh, right now most of the uh, companies are focusing on developing the uh, sensing technologies to support the autonomous driving. Uh, they will have the radar sensors, the video cameras, the LiDAR sensor, uh, also they have some real sensors, and those things will also be linked to the GPS uh, signals. And they will have some uh, central computers to process in those sensing data and uh, uh, provide some guidance for the uh, for the vehicle's dynamics for them to move on the road. So the, uh, with those sensors, we can, uh, especially with the uh, GPS and those uh, in-car sensors, we can build the uh, 3D maps. They are uh, uh, controlling the uh, steering about the angles and the speed, 
and also it's related to the uh, fleet management to maintain the cars on the road, and uh, security is another issue for us vehicles. Um, this one shows the uh, roadmap of the autonomous vehicle development, and we all know that currently we are developing uh, five autonomy levels. Uh, level one is the fiddle, level two is the uh, uh, handle, three is the uh, uh, IO, and uh, four is the uh, minor, and uh, five is total fully autonomous. Um, this one is actually, uh, this one map, in my opinion, is a little bit aggressive, because we are already in uh, 2019 right now. Some of the performance has not been realized yet. Uh, but the, we can anticipate that it will be the future trend of the autonomous driving uh, development. Um, uh, you will see here that there will be a lot of uh, OEMs focusing on the developing uh, autonomous vehicles. The level one, the level two, will be commercialized uh, in 2019 and 2020. And this is uh, quite realistic. You will, when you buy and purchase a new car, you will find a lot of uh, uh, lane centering, lane centering systems, the traffic jam alert systems. Those are comes from the uh, level two. And the level three is about the uh, cooperative uh, electric bridge control, which means the, uh, the cars will drive the, uh, uh, the system will drive the car by itself. They will only allow to use when there are some uh, abnormal things happen, they cannot, and they will ask you to take over the, uh, the control when they cannot handle it. Uh, level four is a uh, fully, uh, it's a high automation, so uh, the cars can handle everything, don't need to interrupt it. Uh, only once, once they are joined and the geofence they are real. And the five, I don't know whether 2030 is the uh, realistic anticipation, uh, but uh, they put some uh, they put some timeline there. Um, this is the uh, market analysis about the uh, house vehicles. Uh, we have very little uh, revenue right now in 2019, but we are uh, anticipating that the development will increasing dramatically. Uh, from now to uh, 2030, they will increase to like uh, uh, 60, 60 billion dollars. Um, and uh, we can see that the uh, level three uh, automation will increase, but uh, after 2026, they will drop due to the developed maturity of the level four and level five automations. Um, the analysis shows that the uh, by 2040, uh, almost 66% uh, of the uh, passenger kilometers will be dropped by, controlled by the autonomous vehicles. That's a very huge amount of the uh, market for the autonomous driving. Uh, combining the uh, two numbers, 28% of the Canadian uh, vehicles, new Canadian vehicles, and 68% uh, uh, of the uh, passenger kilometer travels, they are all belong to Canadian autonomous vehicles area. We will anticipate that in the future, there will be a lot of Canadian autonomous vehicles drive traveling on the road. And now the issue is like, uh, how can we manage them efficiently? Uh, especially for those uh, uh, OEMs, they, they have their own Canadian autonomous vehicles. They want to provide the real-time management to those cars. Uh, uh, but before the releasing the, uh, the vehicles, uh, safety is one fundamental feature they have to guarantee before they sell the cars to the customers. Uh, the things we can play with is the, uh, the experience of the consumers who are using the Canadian Tunnels vehicles, which is well represented as the smoothness of the driving behaviors and driving comfort on the road. Uh, this will require us to manage all those vehicles on the road. The manage means we need to monitor their behaviors uh, we have to monitor all the uh, the behaviors of all the connected vehicles, and also we try to find out the way to understand the uh, some non-connected vehicles surrounding the connected cars. And also we need to give some instructions for the uh, for each connected vehicle based on the information we collect and shared in the network. And uh, we want to manage those vehicles all the time so that the, uh, the, we can guarantee the safety and the driving comfort. And also these services should be provided in real time uh, to satisfy the requirements or to process the complicated traffic conditions. 
uh, this will lead to the uh, some practical consideration. Uh, we are always considering the cars only on a large scale city or large scale network, and we want to provide the real time management. In that sense, we uh, propose a uh, hierarchical architecture, and I'm going to show some details about the hierarchy later. So the, uh, this slide shows the summary about the problems. So the uh, advanced traffic management requires the real-time uh, control of the connected and autonomous vehicles at different scales of the road network. But the current, the existing study uh, only focuses on designing some algorithms just for one scale uh, of the uh, network. And the hierarchical architecture should be provided to implement different type of the uh, uh, Canadian tunnel vehicle implementation with different uh, uh, aggregation level of information. Uh, that's the uh, target that we are trying to uh, solve. Uh, the existing study, uh, this is the existing architecture that we I found in the literature. Uh, there will be some roads architecture, uh, California Pass architecture, all of 21 uh, collaborative driving systems, and the other two. Uh, there will be some limitations about their uh, architecture. First, uh, they need uh, some well developed uh, uh, infrastructures to support the Canadian tunnels vehicles. And the second, uh, some of them require very high mark penetration rate of the Canadian cars, so they can form the platoons to do the management. And uh, uh, most of them does not have any simulation evaluation or the field experiments. So this work is trying to develop in the vehicle based. Uh, traffic management system are uh, majorly targeted for the uh, OEMs and make a comprehensive system analysis. Uh, this is the, uh, the brief, uh, very brief introduction about the uh, architecture that we are trying to propose. It's uh, majorly based on the uh, geometrical information. So the, at the lowest level, there will be the information on the management for each individual connected autonomous vehicles. And then, Go to the section which represents a single road segment on a single intersection. Uh, and then on top, there will be locality, there will be very small regions with multiple road segments and multiple intersections. And uh, on top, there will be the city, so we're trying to manage the behaviors of all the Canadian tunnels vehicles in the whole city. And the data center will try to uh, provide the services for the very large regions of uh, all the entire country. And uh, based on these definitions, we have the uh, city manager for the entire city, the regions for the locality, the uh, section manager for each segment, and then give instructions to connect it on the speakers. Uh, with this kind of geo geometrical uh, identification of the uh, management, uh, we, got, we can gain some benefits, right? the uh, large scale management, the second one, the similar services, the control, and efficient resource utilization. Uh, this one will show some details about how we can gain the uh, benefits. Uh, with this kind of architecture, we are expecting that the, uh, the maximum uh, latency will be very small, uh, especially when we, when we consider the uh, control for each individual connected vehicles. Um, so the uh, definitely, for, for the upper levels, the latency will be larger because we need to collect data to aggregate them, and uh, there will be some latency during the computations. Uh, but we can make sure that we can always control the cars at every 100 milliseconds. Um, so this would be the four benefits that I just uh, listed. For the large scale uh, management, uh, based on the ge uh, geometrical uh, management, we are able to provide a special and temporal uh, hierarch hierarchical architecture so that for each car, they will always be managed by one, uh, for example, by one micro cloud, which represents the section manager to provide the services and give some guidance on the road. Uh, the, we are also able to provide the similar services. So with the combination of all those uh, section manager, the kind of manager, we are able to track in the connected vehicles, and sometimes we are able to find tracking the non-connected vehicles across different regions. And uh, the real-time, so we, the real-time service is most related to this uh, uh, section manager. So we are able to give the guidance at every uh, 500 milliseconds. 
and uh, also this kind of architecture is uh, uh, it's very useful for the resource management, resource utilization. This is more related to the uh, communication part about how we can how the cost to share the information and uh, transfer the information to the data center. Um, so uh, in this uh, particular project, at the beginning, at the uh, early stage, I'm just focusing on the three levels. The first one, the city manager, is trying to uh, provide the uh, services for the entire network, uh, developing the name group uh, level navigation system, which we are trying to uh, uh, provide the route for the vehicles, not only based on the link performance, uh, instead we provide the then uh, link group information, uh, which is uh, related to the uh, turns on the road. And uh, also we have, we, identify, we define the uh, locality uh, managers, which we are using more detailed information. So here we are considering the land level information to provide the land level routing, give the uh, optimal land uh, suggestions for each Canadian tunnel vehicles. And uh, lastly, it's about the section manager, which is about the services of the single segment. Uh, here, I'm only focusing on the uh, services for the uh, uh, traffic incidents. We are pro we are, I developed the lane changing assistance system to provide the services for the cars to pass the incidents faster. Um, this will be some details about each, uh, of each application that I propose. For the lane changing assistant, it's proposed to resolve the road congestion and better human behaviors uh, at the road incidents. So for each, for the connected vehicles, which are if there are the incidents happens on the road, the connected vehicle will try to identify where the incident is and how many lanes will be blocked, and then share the information to the uh, locality server uh, either through the uh, cellular networks or through the communication to the uh, infrastructures. And then they were informed to the uh, micro cloud about uh, multiple uh, uh, connected vehicles on the road, and then give them instructions about which lane is the best lane for them to pass the intersection at a high speed. Uh, this would be one uh, video showing the effect of the uh, benefits. Uh, the, on the top, that will be 70% uh, of the connected vehicles under the control, brought in the base case. And you can see the average speed of the kinetic vehicle and non-kinetic vehicle. Kinetic vehicle always has the higher speed uh, than the non-kinetic vehicle. Uh, and also, if you compare the base case and the controller scenario, the uh, another base case there will be long queue ahead of the uh, incidents, and our definitely the average speed of the uh, controller case will be much higher than the uh, controller case. Uh, the second one is about the locality manager, which I proposed the uh, land level routing. So this one is trying to search the optimal lane and uh, for each Canadian tunnel vehicles and balance the traffic on the road so that the uh, the whole link will be fully utilized. Uh, for this algorithm, we will divide the links into several segments and uh, define the cells for each lane in each segment and then monitor the tra every traffic conditions in each cell based on the connected vehicle traveling on the road uh, and search for the optimal lane, no, optimal lane pass for the connected vehicle to pass the entire segment with the minimum delay. Um, the third one is the city manager, which will uh, provide dynamic lane group level routing. So here I'm focusing on the uh, arterial roads with the intersections. Uh, we are trying to identify the lane groups based on the vehicle trends, so the, uh, the links with left turns, through and right turns will be differentiated. And uh, we are using the signal information to predict, signal information and also the connected vehicle information of the road traffic to predict the cost of the turns and then estimate the shortest pass with the turning cost so that we can find out the optimal routes of the, of the connected tunnel vehicles on the road. Uh, this would be the summary about the uh, whole system development. Uh, we just uh, uh, focus on the connected vehicle to the city level. Uh, the information we are trying to use at the connected vehicle which will comes from the in-car sensors, like the uh, radar lighter and cameras. We are able to find out the images, image information about the road traffic, the GPS information, and some other sensor information. 
and uh, we get them to uh, get the vehicle dynamics and the road incident information for the uh, section manager, and uh, then further agree them to get the land level traffic conditions. And at a city level, we just uh, we try to get the land group level traffic conditions. So similar to what I explained previously, the latency will get higher at the uh, upper level of the management. And then we propose several traffic control systems. They will all give the instructions to each connected on those vehicles. Uh, the frequency will come from uh, low to high due to the, uh, the latency that we specified at each level. At each level. And uh, also the low level and low level has the uh, has more accurate information about the surrounding traffic, so they will have the higher priority to be executed for the uh, for the connected cars vehicles. Um, once the system is developed, we also propose the uh, uh, simulation to evaluate the performance of the system in the real city level road networks. The one I'm using is the interstate highway uh, in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, the, I mean, the network is about uh, 25 miles by 3 miles. Uh, we are using the realistic traffic conditions as a network. And uh, the traffic incidents, uh, we generate several three traffic incidents on the road to uh, to, real, to implement our uh, net changing assistance system. And in this network, totally we simulate uh, 30,000 cars, that's like a lot, for the, for the single simulation. Um, here we are using some realistic uh, assumptions for the connected autonomous vehicles. Uh, first, we only provide, we only using the information collected by connected autonomous vehicles. Uh, that includes the, the dynamics of the connected autonomous vehicles itself, and also some surrounding non-connected vehicle information. Uh, also, we are we are trying to get some uh, third-party resources, uh, such as the Google Map, so that the both connected and non connected vehicles can get the uh, aggregate link, link information from the third party. Uh, the hierarchical architecture is also applied for this network. Uh, the details will be shown here. This is the whole network we are trying to simulate. Um, the entire network will be considered, will be managed by one city manager, and the dynamic routing strategy is applied. Uh, the city will be divided into four uh, locality regions. And each one is controlled by one manager, and we will apply the land level routing strategy for that one. Um, in addition, for the uh, for the three instances that we uh, introduced to the network, each one will be managed by one section manager, and the land changing assistance system will be proposed at that segment. Uh, this is a short demo to see the effect of the uh, whole system. Um, first, it's about the city manager. It's about the uh, dynamic routing strategy. Here you can see that the uh, connected vehicles, which would be the pink car, will bring out to some less congested area. And for the locality manager, you will see that those connected vehicles will be instructed to the optimal length is the high speed. And the third one is about the uh, section manager, which you will see similar benefit to the previous video. So the connected vehicles will be instructed to uh, change to the open lanes earlier before they get to the uh, traffic condition. And this, there will be some detailed uh, analysis about the uh, benefit of the system. The first one comes from the section manager about how we manage the connected vehicles at the uh, intersections and the incidents. Uh, the, this figure shows the speed profiles of the uh, different type of the cars. Uh, the black line comes from the base case, that will be the average, uh, the average speed of all the cars without control. Blue is the, uh, is the behavior of the connected vehicle, and uh, the red is the connected, uh, non connected vehicle. You can see that the, uh, the connected vehicle will always has the highest speed to pass the incidents. And uh, the, uh, another thing we found that the, even for under the control case, the non connected vehicle will also have the higher speed than the uh, base case, which means the entire traffic will be improved. Uh, for the locality manual, uh, if you recall the, uh, the algorithm, we propose the, uh, we propose the control instruction for the connected autonomous vehicles to go to the optimal lane. 
and uh, these will be two links that I pick up from the simulation. Uh, the, uh, the blue line shows the speed of the uh, of each lane, and here you can see that for the uh, for the first link, the uh, the optimal lane is the second one, so it was observed a lot of uh, plenty because basically will be the uh, brown bar here compared to the other lanes. And for this one, the first lane is the uh, best lane. And all the penalty vehicles will be instructed to the first lane. But for the non penalty vehicles, they still have some uncertainty about the different lanes, so they will be distributed at different lanes. Uh, that's what we found. The penalty will be instructed that there is the highest speed. And uh, there, this, this will give us another side effect, because they will, uh, we, will, we know that in the short term, the penetration rate of the kinetic vehicles will not be very high. But with this kind of control, we are able to move all the kinetic that autonomous vehicles to the same lane so that we can increase the penetration rate in that specific lane, which means we can provide a better uh, control such as the vehicle platooning in the optimal lane and give the uh, better performance for the kinetic autonomous vehicles. Uh, the this figure shows the overall performance of the entire network and it shows the uh, savings in the delay and the different mark country rate of the connected autonomous vehicles. Uh, the green line is the, uh, green line is the performance of the connected vehicle. We will observe that the connected vehicle will gain a very high savings even at the low country rate, the high zone which at 10%. Um, but the savings will decrease when the country rate increase this is a, this is caused by the uh, it is really the control that we propose for the connected and tunnel vehicles. They are not covered with each other, so with more connected vehicles there, uh, their performance their performance will not be as good as the uh, low energy rate. Um, for the uh, non connected vehicle, that will be the red line. We will always see that the performance will the delay will be uh, delay savings will be higher at a higher energy rate. Uh, this also indicates that the how system performance is increased. And uh, then due to the mixed effect of the connected and non-connected vehicles, we will get the uh, concave relationship between the savings and penetration rate for the uh, for the entire traffic. Uh, so that's all about the uh, development of the free traffic management system and the evaluation. So for this conclusion, uh, the, uh, we propose the hierarchical traffic management system uh, to control connected autonomous vehicles from in car level to the city level, and they can resolve the traffic conditions and uh, uh, the impact of the traffic incidents. And uh, the uh, penetration rate of the connected vehicles can be also analyzed. In the future, we can evaluate the system uh, in the even larger cities such as uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, metropolitan area, or integrate the system with some user preferences and other mobility services like the shared right. Or we can consider the uh, introducing the uh, uh, customized services for each uh, users, not only based on the travel time we can consider the fuel usage or the safety concerns on the road. Uh, another thing that I plan to do in the future, uh, right now, uh, the uh, architecture is proposed for the vehicles only. Uh, the vehicle are needed architecture, but in the future we know that. The uh, infrastructure also plays an uh, important role in traffic management. So we want to propose an uh, integrated vehicle to infrastructure, infrastructure management system so that we can control cars and infrastructure at the same time and also coordinate them to gain better performance on the road. Uh, the second uh, thing is like right now we propose the model based traffic control. Uh, all the strategies and the instructions are given based on the prediction uh, with the traffic flow models. But we see that there will be some advantages about the AI technologies to gain better predictions and uh, help us to find out the even better uh, control actions for the cars and also the traffic. So the AI-enhanced traffic management system will be uh, another direction that I'm trying to pursue for this area. Uh, I guess that will be all. Thank you very much for your listening.
Yeah, level so, three. Well, the definition of level three is a uh, um, uh, ISO. So uh, the drivers still need to stay in the driver's seat and uh, try to take over that one. There will be a lot of uh, OEMs and the uh, autonomous driving uh, service providers working on that area. But the, uh, they are targeted trying to find out the, uh, to minimize the, uh, or actually maximize the, uh, the duration for the, uh, for the drivers to, uh, to take the role, take the, uh, role of the autonomous driving. Um, I think for the level three, autopilot is one kind of uh, level level three automation. Uh, there will be some premature uh, products in the market, uh, but how mature it is, I'm not really not quite sure. But the uh, based on the roadmap they propose. Uh, they should have the. Uh, they should be released in the uh, next uh, five years. Uh, what I know about the level three automation uh, in Toyota, I work for Toyota, so I have some knowledge about it. The uh, Trying to uh, do some tests in some closed, uh, uh, closed uh, test event, uh, but they are plan about the uh, releasing the products is after two years. Yeah, the, at least for U.S. government, they are trying to let the OEMs to play the, uh, those, the whole games by themselves first and then try to see their result and make some uh, design some policies later. I'm not quite sure about uh, Canada, maybe we'll follow U.S. policies.